I'm going to talk for a little bit before we get any food, some between you and the lunch, uh, about C4, what it is, and where we're aiming in the near future. And I hope you will find this uh, interesting and stimulating for your appetite. So, for those few of you, I think, that haven't heard about C4, the Center for International Forestry Research. Our job is really to put forestry and landscapes high on the political agenda and contribute to broader development goals, and that's important, I'll come back to that. We are an intergovernmental organization. Our headquarters is in Bogor, and it's shown in the picture here. And our job is really about research, capacity building, outreach, to bring solid and relevant science to decision makers. Um, it started 20 years ago, that's why we have a 20th anniversary, no surprise. And it's, we are more or less a product of the Rio meeting in 1992, also known as Stockholm Plus 20. Founding sponsors were four countries, Australia, Sweden, Switzerland and the United States. And Indonesia did successfully, thankfully, the host C4 um, uh, headquarters in Bogor. And we are also honored to have Pak Jamal here today, who is on the picture. <laughs> who at the time, as you can see, have signed the host country agreement with C4. We have a very important host country partnership. Last year, um, the President of Indonesia visited C4 just before the Rio Plus 20 meeting. Um. Now, why are forests important? This may not be news to many of you, but I think it's important to change the perspective a bit. Overall, we can say that sustainable landscapes depend on forests. Why do I have this slide up? Well, partly because forests and forestry is often seen as a problem. It's deforestation, it's forest degradation, it's loss of biodiversity, it's illegal trade, and, and many other things. So forestry is often a problem, at least on the international scene. We want to turn that around and see forestry instead as a positive contribution to development. This is one good example. This is Great Jakarta. You can see Seifer in the outskirts. And of course, quite a few people live here. According to some statistics, this is now the second largest metropolitan area on the planet, 28 million people. And interestingly, as many of you know, we have fairly safe drinking water in the Greater Jakarta region. Why do we have that? Well, it's because of the forest that is on the volcano outside Bogor, where it rains a lot, where water is harvested and brought to consumers in Jakarta. This is also forest. So, forest in the bigger picture looks more or less like this to me. We have what I would call the big five political processes. We have the Millennium Development Goals dealing with poverty. We have the World Food Security Summit dealing with food security. We have the Climate Change Convention, which is dealing with climate change. We have the Convention on Biological Diversity. And we have the, new, uh, the newcomer, the Green Economy, since last year. These are the big five that forestry needs to relate to. Um, through that, we can develop political relevance, positive contributions, and not only see forests and forestry as a problem, rather than as opportunities. This, however, is a problem. I took these pictures on a visit to uh, Riau province in August, and obviously many of you know what we're looking at. We're looking at fires in the top two pictures. Bottom left picture, we see that these fires also damage planted forests. And bottom right, we see that the purpose of, of all this is to establish plantations. Um, this is a conference on business for environment. So I'll comment this in terms of business. Somebody made this investment, and somebody is going to put the palm oil in their value chains. That's the kind of things we are talking about, and the kind of things we need to deal with. I'm not putting any blame anywhere, I'm just noting that this is key issue that we're dealing with. And importantly, forestry and forests is only part of this. This is also about agriculture, this is also about livelihoods, this is also about business and trade, and it's about the greater landscape. This is why I'm not going to bring the discussion into landscapes. We 
Before we do that, I want you to look at this graph. Because we need to zoom out a little bit. This is a little bit complicated to read, but I'll try to take it one by one. Over the past 50 years or so, we have tripled a lot of things. We have tripled the GDP per capita worldwide. We have tripled the food production. We have enough food. We have also tripled the number of people that are not food insecure. And we've also tripled our greenhouse gas emissions. So if you look at those top lines, it's an amazing correlation. But interestingly, the number of food insecure people have stayed the same. And so the connection I want to make here is that we often hear about agriculture in terms of food security. My proposition is that agriculture is important, is necessary for food security, but it's not sufficient. And obviously there must be other factors than increased food production and, and improved economy that causes food insecurity. In other words, let's not make uh, the different political agendas enemies of each other. I'll come back to that in a minute. Right now, actually. What we, what we see, in fact, is that political processes are very focused, but they're also fragmented. These are the same big five as I showed before. The issue we have, at least at the international level, is that these processes seldom talk to each other. And we need to figure out how can we connect them, how can we develop um, an agenda, a way forward that actually deals with these issues together. We think that this is why we need landscapes. Why do we need landscapes? Well, landscapes are essential for the future we want. Landscapes provide all our food. They provide livelihoods for several billion people worldwide. They host all our terrestrial biological diversity. But they're also where a third of our greenhouse gas emissions happens. So landscapes are essential for the future we want. We have to deal with them, and we have to deal with them as a whole. And the fragmentation of sectors and political processes actually hinder us in dealing with the landscape. Therefore, we're talking more and more about the landscape's approach to create synergies and manage those trade-offs across sectors, across political processes. And we, need, we recognize in this that people on the ground are in charge. It is the people on the ground, their decisions, their aspirations, their ambitions, and their investments that will tell us if we move towards sustainable landscapes, sustainable development, or not. And finally, Private finance, coming back to this conference, private finance is key for these solutions. Um, I want to expand on that a little bit before I continue. Finance for sustainable landscape. Let's try and connect the dots. First of all, there is capital. Investors tell us that there is abundant capital that seek good investment propositions that also contributes to sustainable development. Of course, it needs to be a decent return, um, and that, that's, that's the starting point. But there is increasing interest and demand for sustainable ventures. Farmers, foresters, producers lack, in many instances, access to long-term, affordable and reliable capital. And it is, in fact, a major limiting factor for those enterprises. And then thirdly, the public sector as we know, as a desire to use public funds for demonstrable results in delivering public goods and sustainable development. So, all we have to do is to connect these dots. It's not easy, but we think we have some good approaches to this. We have a discussion forum, uh, a session uh, in the afternoon, uh, in the plenary session, where we can expand further on this. Now, to work with landscapes, one of the issues is complexity. Everybody says that the devil is in the details. I say that the details themselves are often the devil. We have to find a common language by which we can interest people in landscapes, describe what we want to achieve, and, not least, explain it to investors what it is that they can expect in return. This needs to be, we need to have objectives, measures, and describe performances in ways that are easy to understand, that apply to any scale, 
to a farm as well as to a catchment as well as to a country. We have to be able to apply this common language to any location. It has to be measurable. And we need to think about what we mean by sustainability. Is sustainability really an absolute achievement? Is there a target? Or can we instead look at sustainability as a direction? We are going in the right direction. Maybe that's easier to, to contemplate. And at the end of the day, shouldn't sustainable landscape make an excellent sustainable development goal? We think that by and large we can bring this down to four objectives. This is a lot of discussion and it's really hard work to simplify. Making things more complex is easy. You just add the details and then you continue to, to muddle the discussion. But bringing things together and making them more simplified is hard work. We think that four objectives can describe what we want with landscapes. One is to improve livelihoods. One is to sustain ecosystem services. One is to provide sufficient food and non-food products. And one is to make sure we have resource efficiency and low levels of pollution. Won't go more into detail, but these are four objectives that I think I could explain to uh, many people and they would probably agree. We just had the climate change uh, meetings in Warsaw. And at those meetings, we traditionally have had a forest day. C4 has, together with partners, hosted a forest day. In parallel, there's been an agriculture day, run by agriculture organizations and their partners. This year, we decided to join forces because, if you remember the pictures I showed before, we can't really find the solutions unless we work together across agriculture and forestry. So therefore, we organized the first global landscapes forum. And we wanted to do that to inform climate change negotiations, agreements and actions, and to inform the process on sustainable development goals. We had more than 2,000 participants over two days, and the four themes were investment, governance, climate change, and food and nutrition. We're now going to watch a short video from this event to, before I conclude my presentation. So that was some, some uh, perspectives from the Landscapes Forum. Now looking forward, what defines our focus and priorities? The post-2015 development agenda, food security aspirations, handling climate change, maintaining biological diversity, and green growth with equity. Put all this together and we have to work at the landscape level. Forestry is an important part of this um, and we need to work together across sectors. My final point here is an advertisement. We're going to take all of these issues into um, a conference that is organized by CFR and partners here in Jakarta, we call it Forest Asia, with the subtitle Sustainable Landscapes for Green Growth in ASEAN. There will be a lot more information on this coming up in the next few months, um, but this really follows on the issues I've talked about and finding the solutions and the way forward. So again, very much welcome to this lunch. I want to particularly welcome um, Javi Darianto from uh, the Minister of Forestry, uh, as I mentioned, Pak Jamal, our co-founder, um, Agus Bernomo from the President's Office, Ayril uh, Abdi from the State Secretariat and Benedict Lakitan, Special Advisor to the Minister of Research and Technology and all others. Very much welcome to this C420 year anniversary lunch.